We have a coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, a bright region emerges on the Sun's far side, and it's time to check in again at the Red Planet. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Although it is official we are in solar cycle 25, the solar activity sure is taking a while to ramp up. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see there aren't a lot of active regions on the Earth facing disk right now. We do have a region in the southern hemisphere, but it's getting to fizzle out a little bit. It hasn't given us all that much. However, we do have a remnant coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth's strike zone here over the next couple days. It could give us a small burst of fast solar wind that could bring aurora down to high latitudes but not much else. And it doesn't look like there's a lot else going on on the front side. However, as we switch to our far-sided sun, now this is stereo A and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. You can see the sun looks pretty bland except in that eastern limb in the northern hemisphere. Oh my goodness, look at that bright region that's beginning to rotate into stereo's view. This is the region that we believe was shot that massive uh, solar storm off of the sun's west limb a short while ago. And as it rotates into stereo, view we're going to be checking to see if it's flare active and if it's giving us any activity at all to know whether or not it might be a solar storm producer meanwhile it's definitely going to boost the solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders here over the next couple days as it rotates into earth view but it doesn't look like it's going to give us any radio bursts and that's good news for radio comms for space traffic and now for your martian minute it's been about a month since we checked in at the Red Planet, and thankfully, as we've moved past the winter solstice, the dust storms seem to be finally calming down. As we take a look at the Martian atmosphere over the past month, using the Themis imager aboard a Mars Odyssey, we see at the beginning of August, we were still getting some strong dust-ups in the plains of Asperia, which is southeast of Jezero Crater. And remember, Jezero Crater is where we plan to land the Perseverance rover sometime next year. Then in the second week and the third week of August, we got multiple dust-ups in Gale Crater near Curiosity and also in the Isdis Planitia, which is just right in where Jezero Crater is. So that area has been a little bit of a problem for a while. But luckily, as we started moving into uh, September, things at least near Jezero Crater have begun to die down and calm down. We are still having issues in Gale Crater, which is expected because it's much closer to the equator. So it takes a much a little bit longer for things like dust storms to kind of die down a little bit. And hopefully as we continue moving in through September, we will see those areas calm down as well because we definitely don't want to see a lot of dust storms anywhere near either InSight or Curiosity Rover. And speaking of, in Gale Crater, right now Curiosity is enjoying a balmy th minus three degrees Celsius. The low is a minus 69 Celsius. And at Elysium Planitia, which is just a little bit higher latitude where InSight is, InSight is seeing a high of minus 14 Celsius, a low of 90, minus 96 Celsius, and the winds are out of the west-northwest at six meters a second. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of a new moon on our way to a first quarter, and by the 24th, the moon will be about 50% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth's strike zone sometime later this week. So at high latitudes, no is expected unsettled to active conditions, but, but with up to about a 15% chance of a major storm. So we should get a little bit of aurora show from this at high latitudes. At mid latitudes, however, we are expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have about 20% chance of active conditions. And who knows? This may actually get a little bit better as time goes on, but it's hard to say because this coronal hole is kind of, it's a remnant coronal hole and that means the fast solar wind will be a bit patchy and it's hard to really tell whether or not the aurora at mid latitudes is even worth chasing. So if you're an aurora photographer at mid latitudes, only if you're dedicated should you go out after this one. 
Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, and that should make you GPS users very happy because we have no risk for radio blackouts on Earth's day side, so GPS reception should be pretty top-notch. However, we do have some boosted solar flux. As you can see, the solar flux should be boosting uh, possibly into the mid-70s, the balmy mid-70s by the end of the week, and that is due to a region that is rotating into Earth view from the sun's far side. This could be a, a sunspot region, so it is boosting that solar flux. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you should notice your propagation continuing to increase and get better and better on Earth's day side throughout the course of this week. Now, also because we're still beginning to climb out of solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is a bit more intense than we'd like it to be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So although we are officially in solar cycle 25, I mean, we've kind of known that since about December of last year, but it's definitely nice to get that official stamp of approval to know that we're moving on up. I wish the sun would get the memo, because right now activity is pretty quiet. Now we do have a remnant coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days, and that could give us a little burst of fast solar wind that could bring aurora down to high latitudes, maybe a skosh at mid-latitudes, but only you dedicated aurora chasers should you even bother if you're at mid-latitudes to go see if you could catch the aurora because it's going to be elusive. Now amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well we're barely hanging on to that low edge of marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side, but we do have a reprieve because we do have that bright region that's going to be rotating into Earth view from the sun's far side here in the next couple days and that could boost us a little bit higher and maybe get us close to the mid-70s. So expect radio radio propagation on Earth's day side to boost up just a little bit here this next week. Now GPS users, well you know we really aren't dealing with any big solar storms right now and it doesn't look like this fast solar wind is going to cause us any problems. And because the solar flux is still low, even with that boost coming from that new bright region, I guess this means that GPS reception should be pretty good for you. Definitely on the day side, but also likely on the night side. I'm Tamitha Sko, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.